Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy, and this is Introduction to Audit Command Language, hereforth known as ACL. So, it, this is obviously ACL Analytics by ACL. Uh, so, ACL Analytics is the product that ACL offers, and it's probably its most popular product by a fairly large margin. Uh, but it also offers many other products that are, are very useful. Uh, so a little bit more about these lessons. So we are using version 11.1.3.793 Unicode, uh, but realistically, it's gonna look very similar. Um, scripting wise, even interface, like some of the colors have changed, that they've changed the user interface going from 10, uh, I think 10.3 to 11, but more or less if you follow along and uh, you may have to search for it, uh, but when it comes to scripting, it's going to look very similar. There's just some like handy shortcuts that they put into 11. Actually, 11 is a fairly good upgrade, and I'm actually uh, fairly impressed. And a little bit more about myself. So obviously, you saw that uh, my name's King IV. I'm a Master's of Accounting and Bachelor's of Accounting and Financial Management graduate from the University of Waterloo. And I also teach at the University of Waterloo Computer System Auditing and Introduction to Business Analytics. And I also do analytics uh, as my everyday job. So my brain is always on analytics and ACL is one of the main tools that I use uh, both when I when I teach, not, not as much, uh, but also when I um, do it in practice. So... The, the, I uh, just as a preface, these are meant as introductory lesson sets, and you're gonna see if you are familiar with ACL, I definitely recommend still sticking around. Uh, but what you also notice is that my technique and my approach might be slightly different than the approach that that you may take. As there's there's even when you import data, which is one of the first things that we're gonna cover, and we're actually gonna cover in the next lesson. You'll see that there's many ways that you do it, and uh, I have a particular technique that I like to use. Uh, these are going to be short instructional videos, and I'm not going to provide a full explanation on on why each of these functions exist or every single scenario, but I am going to provide a little bit of detail so that you can follow along and understand when to use these tools. Uh, so all the data is going to be accessible through this bit.ly link, uh, bit.ly slash ACL data. So that's going to be posted there. It's basically connected to a Dropbox uh, where you can uh, have access to that Dropbox folder and and uh, have access all, to all the data. So uh, very, uh, very handy. So let's move on to the next slide. So these are the basically eight lessons. Uh, so again, what is ACL? ACL is mostly used in the context of an audit. So whether it's an external audit and you're applying it to get assurance uh, over your account balances, over the uh, reliability of the financial statements. So it's a really great tool when it comes to journal entry testing, testing accounts payable, testing the aging of accounts receivable, for example, performing random sampling, comparing two very large data sets. Uh, together, for example, uh, uh, government transactions that you get from a, if you're a customs broker, getting government transactions and comparing that to the actual revenue invoices to see whether or not they're all valid and uh, complete and accurate in occurrence. It's a really powerful tool. Instead of testing, for example, in that government uh, custom broker's example, uh, the organization might put through like a, a million uh, custom trans. Uh, cu orders through customs and if you were to say sample 100 which is a lot in the context of a financial audit uh, to test revenue 100 out of a million one do you really have comfort that you that someone actually say that uh, that revenue is complete accurate occurrence everything is fine and dandy maybe uh, maybe not uh, uh, some of the older audit approaches might say so, but once you actually see, uh, when you test all million transactions, you'll actually understand really what happens to every single transaction, what are all the different different business processes, and where are all the different paths these transactions take. Because even if 90% of the transactions take 
uh, a particular path and you were sample 100, likely you're going to cover all those 90%. But what happens with those last 10%? And revenue could be misstated with those last 10%. You, you recognize revenue early, not recognize, you shouldn't recognize revenue at all, um, et cetera, et cetera. A really great tool. It's also very commonly used, and it's probably the, and uh, I don't know if this for sure, but it's likely the market leader uh, within the audit space. And that includes the internal audit space. But you'll see uh, on my YouTube channel, on this YouTube channel, there's also videos on case uh, idea by Caseware, which is another great tool. Um, slightly different approaches to it, but you'll see very many similarities. If you know one, you're gonna be able to learn the other uh, with relative ease. So ACL, again, a uh, great tool, mostly used in the audit space. You can use it for reporting somewhat and some uh, data analysis, but there are probably better tools if you want to actually go and crunch uh, bigger data or do some more advanced uh, data visualization, which I will also cover on this channel. So enough about me blabbering about uh, ACL. Uh, let's get started. So I'm going to be opening up ACL 11. So ACL 11, slightly different than, um, than 10 and below, where 10 and below would have gave you basically an empty... ACL project, not even really, basically AC, empty ACL shell. While here it says new project, open project, results cloud, uh, script hub, which has some um, uh, tested and approved scripts. Some of them are good. Some of them like I don't really find uh, overly useful. It's pretty hard to develop a script for generic use, uh, but they do their best. And then obviously support if you want to contact the support. So I'm just going to go to a recently open one. This is ACL demo. So this should come with every ACL package. So I'm just going to click on here or you can really open up uh, any ACL document. And really the purpose of this is just to walk through the different functions and capabilities of ACL. So what you'll see here, very standard menus. And then you'll see here uh, these two bars and then you'll see this command line. So if you don't see those ones, it's likely because it looks something like this. So what you want to do is go to window, show command line, show toolbar. And really, I'm not going to do any of the scripting or perform any of the functions in this video. I'm just going to walk you through it so that you're familiar. So uh, one on this file, so you can click on new. So you can either go uh, new table, which is basically you're going to import the data, a new script, which is essentially where you actually put in your commands if you're if you're going to tell ACL what to do without using the interface. Uh, workspaces. Workspaces are really great. Um, they're really great at creating temporary fields, uh, which, which can be handy, and also you reusing that function over and over again. Uh, creating folders. So, for example, you'll see here, you'll see scripts, tables, uh, workspaces. So those are particular folders that you can create, or you can create a brand new project. Obviously, you can open a project, open a recent project, save your project, um, delete all this uh, print stuff. I almost I, I don't think I've ever used these ones. So if you do use it, uh, I guess good for you. Uh, then here, standard uh, edit. Here, the only thing that is of note is this uh, table layout. And here, it will basically break down uh, for the table that you have open, the names of the fields, the titles of the fields, uh, where they are starting within the data. Uh, if you if they from if they were from an import, uh, the categories of the data. So there's a couple of main categories. So C is is character or string. Basically, how do you categorize your data? Uh, something you categorize your data by. Uh, D is essentially date. So see here, you see expenditure date, payment date, statement date. Uh, no, uh, N is the num number, and then here you have length. Uh, and here's the number of decimal places. And this is really only applicable for uh, numerics. And then here's a more detailed type. So here these roll up into many other ones. Uh, and as well, if it's a created field, a calculated field, no, not calculated, a defined, a defined field, then you might have an if. If it's static, if you're using workspaces, we'll talk about maybe not static. Static's a little bit more of an advanced topic, so we may not cover it. Any notes, defaults. Uh, so defaults will be applicable for 
if statements, any multi values uh, where applicable. Um, so I'm not going to play around too much in this table layout. Some people like to to do different those stuff in the table layout, but to be honest, I really like to script uh, because what's what I find is once you script, uh, you be able to repeat it, and there's, it's more often than not you'll get new data, or your data will be wrong, or your formula will be wrong, and then you have to re-import things. So I just find it's really useful to to script. Uh, so moving on to the next menu, so this data menu. So this is really important. This is also another way of importing data. So you can import it from disk, or if you're connected to a database, you can uh, ODBC connect in. Uh, external, so external definitions. So if you have a, a mainframe, so to be honest, I've never uh, imported from a mainframe. So, but if you do, that's great. I know AS400 is still pretty popular. I don't know about COBOL. Um, I know what COBOL is, but I'm not sure. I've never actually encountered it. Um, when it comes to actually importing data. I've, I've encountered it in general. Uh, if you're connected to a server, uh, this verified function, so I don't really use it that often because I think there's better techniques. Extracting data, so this is where if you want to take a subset of a data or if you want to apply some conditions and create a new table, this is one way. If you want to export, so all these things we're going to cover in future lessons. Uh, so if you want to export externally, ACL, like whether you want a text file, Excel file, uh, sorting and indexing really great. I mostly use sorting. I don't really use indexing that often. Uh, join, relate, merge are very similar. But to be honest, I use mostly joins. Our uh, relates are relations are, are also very good because they they save time and they're very similar to uh, workspaces where they basically a join will create a new table while relate will basically allow you to pull in uh, data from another of uh, another uh, columns from another table and then merge so if you want to merge two two uh, tables together uh, to be honest I don't use the report or crystal reports but you potentially could I don't use search either so this analyze one is very useful so you'll see here count this is very important if you're say for example filtering the data so for example I'm just gonna do something arbitrary quick filter on this particular day what you'll see down here is that uh, ACL will have a question mark for the count for the number of records so here you actually want to go here and this dialog box will open up and you press uh, OK and then uh, it will then uh, provide you the number so really useful and it's actually really important and I actually use it because it also creates a variable here so count one that can be very useful for later on so you can also use total so for example here opens up a dialog box and you can pick on previous balance. For example, press OK. It'll open up this window and say what the previous balance is. So really uh, quick and easy tool to use. And as well, it creates a variable here, total one. So again, very useful. Um, and v these variable thing is super useful. I think they only started implementing in like 10.2 or 10.1. Before that, like you just had to remember that count one in. And uh, total one actually provides you total. Um, and then here, profile and statistics. To be honest, I don't use these very often, but you can use statistics, for example, and it provides, it doesn't really provide you, it just provides you some. I'm just gonna go to uh, new balance, press okay. It provides you some of the data. Here, you can actually go uh, check off a few other things, so you can put like standard deviation. Uh, that's actually probably the extent. Well, nope, I didn't click, I didn't click, click a field, so. Let's click the new balance again. Uh, so here you can see the, the standard deviation. So how much of the how much of new balance before you reach a new standard deviation? The odd part though is they and maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong. It doesn't look like they provide you the um, the median, which is actually rather useful. But that's fine. Uh, so here I don't use really use these that often. Uh, so sequence or gaps very uh, very similar so they allow you for example if you have check numbers uh, that range from 1 to 1 million then you can see if there's any gaps so really good for identifying gaps in transactions duplicates so again you can provide a bunch of criteria uh, fuzzy duplicates where it does more of a, like an approximate search um, classify summarize 
uh, which we'll cover off in the I think one of the future lessons, like lesson three. Uh, Histogram. So again, I don't really use histograms that often, uh, just because I actually don't think it's really histograms are really important. Don't get me wrong, but just not really like that visually appealing in uh, in ACL. In ACL, I think there are better tools, but again, ACL is great for some things and and not so great for others. Uh, cross tab. So basically, that allows you to create like a pivot table um, off your data, which is actually really useful in, in some instances. So an example that I can think of is if um, an example of where I use it is I look through employee expenses and look at top 25 vendors. And then I basically determine who are the top 25 vendors. And then I want to, or even top 25 employees. And then I want to know what do the top 25 employees actually spend their money on. So I'll summarize, summarize on employee number, subtotal, uh, subtotal of the expense, pull out, use extract to extract the top 25. I then join that back in with the original data, pull in only the top 25 vendors or uh, employees with all the data. Then I use cross tab to essentially uh, understand what do the employees spend? Uh, what do the top 25 employees spend on what kind of uh, expense type? And so you get this really quick view really quickly. I know it's a little bit more complicated when I was explaining it, but it's actually a really quick and easy view to, uh, to utilize stratify. So this understands the ranges of the data. Uh, you can use age to understand the age of transactions. This is very common if you want to recalculate aging. Um, and then Benford's Law. So I'll get into uh, in a custom workshop. We'll get into sampling. So you can perform MUS sampling, sampling so monetary unit sampling, uh, record sampling, random sampling. You can put in a random start. You can put in your own start. I don't use applications. I don't really use this tool. Uh, tab that often uh, and I use I do use help quite a bit and I encourage you to use help and when I started learning ACL what I did and it's actually like kind of nerdy but I would uh, basically go through the the list of different functions that there are and just like r just randomly search something so I would search like sub and I'm like okay what's this uh, s sub substring command and I would read up on it and it actually provides pretty good examples and um, pretty good descriptions of, of the inputs. So that's what I did when I was uh, learning ACL, really just exploring. And then basically this, uh, I think they call it toolbar, uh, will eventually is basically um, an icon version of all the things that we just went through, just like the really uh, popular items. So that's introduction to ACL. In the next lesson, we'll co be covering off, let's see what we'll be covering off. We'll carry off importing data, which is really important. Uh, can be really frustrating, so I'm going to show you some uh, cool tool uh, tips on actually how to import data uh, using ACL. So, if you have, I'm going to be posting these videos over the next couple weeks. Uh, so, if you have any questions, comments, uh, suggestions, items that I'm not covering on these introduction lessons that I should cover in future lessons, or if I whether or not I should change this video list. Uh, let me know. Feel free to put in the comments below or feel free to message me directly. Uh, and look forward to speaking to you in the next lesson.